Good morning from the Yalur Islands in Antarctica. This video is all about the benefits of aerial imagery in Antarctica and it all starts right now. Let's go. Good morning once again. We are now on land and our first landing of the trip actually here in the Yalur Islands. This is a colony of Adelie penguins, but more on them in just a minute because this is a, uh, a very unique video. Polar Latitudes has a permit to fly drones here in Antarctica and also Ocean Oceaniades has uh, two scientists on board who also have a drone permit. So a lot of this video is gonna be about the work that Oceaniades is doing and also uh, uh, Polar Latitudes and how they use aerial imagery here in Antarctica to, uh, to benefit the preservation and conservation and, uh, and work here on the continent. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a treat. You don't get to see drone footage from down here very often. So I uh, hope you like this video. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun one but for now Adelie penguins and uh, Antarctica all right so we've got some Adelie penguins here and Adelie penguins are the smallest of the brush tail penguins so they are just little guys and they are really true Antarctic penguins they uh, they're here year-round so even in the winter they stay in Antarctica uh, they might move a little bit further north but they can even be quite a ways in from the ice edge so they're really true Antarctic penguins uh, they're pretty cheeky little guys right now they've got lots of chicks around so the chicks are just starting to molt so they're starting to get their adult feathers and then they'll be heading out to sea Two of them, two of them, right beside the zodiac. We are back on the ship and that was an incredible landing this morning at the Adeli penguin colony and then we got really lucky on the zodiacs with a couple of different crab eater seals and also some humpback whales so just like one after the other after the other and also some gentoo penguins jumping off of an iceberg so just like a safari of uh, landscape and wildlife photography here this morning in Antarctica and uh, now we've got a chance that we're back on the boat to speak with the two scientists we've got Mary and Laura that are working with Oceaniades and uh, I want to talk to them about some of their work and how they use drones to do 3D mapping of the penguin colonies uh, so hopefully we'll be able to connect with them here on the boat and hear what they have to say. Hi my name is Mary I am from Scotland uh, this is my third Antarctic season I'm down here working for an organization called Oceanites. Uh, so Oceanites are uh, an NGO from America uh, and they've been down here doing censuses of penguin populations for the last 31 years. So we keep track of the, uh, the number of penguins and the distribution of penguin colonies down here on the Antarctic Peninsula. And tell me, how do you guys use drones in your work? Yeah, so we've just started using drones within the last few years and that's to complement our uh, traditional survey methods. So traditionally you survey penguins on the ground using a clicker uh, and we've started using drones recently to complement that uh, by using drones to capture some imagery that gives us a permanent record of the penguin colony uh, on that date. So we can look back and see where were the penguins, uh, what was the snow cover like on the island, all these sorts of things. Uh, and we've also been using it to uh, create 3D models of each of the penguin 
Northern Colonies, which uh, is really neat. Uh, they're open source. They're available on our website, penguinmap.com, for anybody to check out. Uh, and so that's available for uh, people that work in expedition, scientists, basically anybody that wants to use it uh, to get a look at a penguin colony and see how do they look. So we can use it for logistics. Uh, we can use it to keep track of any movements in the colony over time, all sorts of things that we can do. We work in teams. So uh, my partner, Laura, is just behind us over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I have the one mic, so okay. Yeah, it's okay. I can try. And I can talk it. loud. <laughs> so how do you guys work together as a team? Um, so we work uh, in pairs. So we have one person flying the drone, and the other person acts as a spotter. Uh, and we have a spotter to make sure that no birds come and interfere with our survey, that the drone isn't going to collide with anything, uh, that we're basically keeping safe. <laughs> Yeah, so we're both certified drone pilots. Um, I'm from the US, so I have my part 107 cert. Um, Mary, what's your cert from? Uh, I live in New Zealand at the moment, so I'm certified under the New Zealand Aviation Authority. Exactly, and so because we're both commercial drone pilots, we can apply for a scientific research permit where we're allowed to use these drones to collect data in Antarctica, and it's an incredible opportunity for both of us to be down here. So the drone work that we uh, do, we collect um, surveys of the colonies, aerial surveys. We fly the drone in transects over the places where the penguins nest. Um, and we use that imagery to build 3D models of the colony. So you can actually go to our website, penguinmap.com, and we have a couple examples of models from different places that we've been in the last few years. Uh, and it's open source, it's available to anybody. We give the same answer, the same data to different industry groups, different scientists, different ex um, expedition companies as well. So we visited uh, the Yaller Islands, a Delhi colony, uh, and we have data for that colony going back, uh, I think at least 15 years. And so me and Laura went out yesterday and we did a hand count and a drone count uh, of the colony there, of all of the chicks across the islands. Uh, and so we counted just over 2,300 chicks yesterday. Um, I think drones present a really incredible opportunity to do research down here in Antarctica. It's a really get, uh, great complementary tool to our traditional survey methods. Um, but I think, yeah, it's going to be important that moving forward, we make sure we keep up with these strict regulations. Um, but yeah, they present a really, really incredible opportunity, a really great tool when they are used properly to contribute towards science and exploration and photography down here as well. And do you think, Laura, that uh, future researchers who want to do work like you guys basically should be uh, commercially uh, permitted, like have their part 107 or, or the equivalent? 100%. It's usually a stipulation of research permits to come down here that you do have the proper certification, training, experience. Um, we all have to log our flight hours really meticulously so that we can report every flight that we do. Um, of course, log all of the all of the work that we do down here. So I think that it is very important to make sure that you're checking your boxes because we want to be able to continue to do this work and so we have to do it properly. you so uh, who are you yeah uh, good uh, morning guys I'm uh, Nenad from Croatia ice pilot on a sea venture uh, being present in Antarctica since 98 so being there done that know a little bit about the new technology is amazing and that's something what we are looking forward to talking particularly about drones yep. uh, flying a drone is not only that in real time you can see the eye situation ahead of you but also reviewing the drone Images, uh, we can learn a lot. A bridge team uh, having uh, the briefing after passing through the ice and see how we did it, yeah. what was the speed, comparing with the charts and the radars. So putting all things together is a great advantage uh, for us. Uh, 
having such images. So thank you, Greg, for doing that for us. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me what you think like the the future of having a drone on board is? Uh, that's something what uh, definitely we we are getting the next season, and we we learn actually how it's important to fly drone ahead of us. Like in this situation today, when you don't know what is ahead of you, you have the white out completely. Bl everything is white. The entire horizon is white. What is the thickness of the ice? What is the situation with the ice ahead of you? You just fly drone up. You go a couple miles ahead of you, you know what you can expect. Because in this situation, the radar just giving you the flat screen, the flat picture, you know, all in the yellow. A drone is giving you different perspective with the reality, what you are facing, hitting with the bow. You can determine the thickness of the ice uh, and, and many, many things. Wildlife, which you have to avoid at the last moment, the drone gives you clear picture in a real time. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, man. My name is Nate Small. I've been working down here 14 years, many different roles on board the ship, expedition leader, photographer, drone pilot, also presenting on wildlife, birds, whales, and talking about the, the ecology around the Antarctic Peninsula. Yeah, when it comes to drone flying down in Antarctica, it's really changed the game. Uh, when it comes to marketing, the, the perspectives that you're getting from drones is just absolutely unreal. It's it just completely changed the way you're putting brochures together. It's changed the way that you're able to uh, display certain things that the ship is doing. When you're breaking through ice and you're filming from the bow, it's one perspective, it's beautiful. When all of a sudden you can film that from up top, it's a totally different perspective and it really makes people realize how special it is. Uh, so marketing has completely changed the game. Some of the other uses that we have of drones, we use it for training purposes. So we can be filming the crane as it's coming down and they're lowering zodiacs and people are getting into them and we can all of a sudden take all that footage and then we can use that for training future guides we can use that for training guests how to get in and out of zodiac so we use drones in many different ways down here all of our drone pilots are permitted uh, so all of our pilots have to have a pilot's license of course those pilot's license have to be recognized by a national authority and all of our particular pilots and our permits go through the united states uh, program so all of our permitting comes from there and even though I have a Canadian license it's recognized by the states so that I can fly drones down here in Antarctica under our permit that's done through America. So as a drone pilot we're never going to do any overflights of penguin colonies we're never going to uh, get near whales we might stay relatively close to whales but we're not going to be flying directly over top of them uh, we try to minimize the amount of times that we're flying over any sort of wildlife and that's just to mitigate risks if something happens to the drone, we don't want it come crashing down on the wildlife. One of the other big issues, we don't want to lose a drone, of course. The minute you lose a drone down here, that's pollution. We don't want to be polluting. And those uh, lithium batteries, the plastics, all that stuff. So try to mitigate pollution just by flying conservatively. So we're not going to be flying into icebergs or stuff like that. Don't want to uh, accidentally hit the wrong joystick and end up in this berg. <laughs> And what would you say to like, uh, you know, normal everyday passengers or photographers or videographers that are looking to come down here on an Antarctic cruise that want to fly? Is that a total no-go? I mean, what are the, what are the polar latitude sort of restrictions on drone flying? Yeah, so the restrictions on drone flying is strictly for commercial purposes or scientific purposes. Uh, so under the polar latitudes permit, we can fly commercially. We're flying for marketing purposes. On occasion, we have passengers that are permitted and that is all done through our head office well before they're coming down. So all of those conversations have happened months, if not years, before they've even booked the trip. And that way they can be on our permits, they can be flying commercially in that regard, and it's not a recreational flight from a passenger. Uh, there's no recreational flying of drones allowed anywhere in Antarctica.
We are back on board and we are actually back in the Beagle Channel. This is the uh, final day of the whole Antarctic cruise and I was putting the timeline together for this video and realized that I forgot to film an outro while here in Antarctica. So I wanted to uh, come back on board here outside on the ship just to give you guys one final train of thought on the benefits of aerial imagery in Antarctica and what we've covered in this video because the, the main ones that, that I've kind of learned as I wanted to make this are absolutely science, navigation and operations. If you can combine those three things and use drones to benefit the work that you're doing within those three fields, they're massively useful in Antarctica. So first with the science, obviously the two girls in Oceaniades counting penguins, they're able to do their 3D drone maps of the area of where the penguins are living, put those online, for all time for people to look at years and years from now to be able to do research on how those penguin colonies are changing. It's just vital and extremely useful information. Then of course the navigation with the ice pilots and being able to kind of utilize the radar and the imagery from the drone to make sure that you're going the right way, you're not gonna hit too much ice, you're avoiding wildlife, all that stuff. And then from the operations perspective, with polar latitudes doing training videos, being able to, to use it for marketing purposes, it's just incredible. It's changed the game, like Nate said. Uh, so I hope that you've enjoyed the, uh, the behind the scenes information from them and also kind of seen uh, a little bit of the work that I do. And I do work as a professional photographer and videographer, and I do have a commercial drone pilot's license as well. And sort of piggybacked on the, the permit of polar latitudes to be able to fly while down here. And I'm also happy to say that at the end of this voyage, there were absolutely no issues whatsoever. We logged all of our flights, very detailed drone logs, and we were uh, monitored every single time. Uh, with people, you know, uh, watching how we were flying and making sure that I was I was following the rules and doing the right thing. So that's all uh, great news that we've been able to finish uh, this journey and the video with uh, with no problems. So that's the end of this video. But stay tuned. We've still got at least three videos, two videos of the uh, expedition and one video that is a uh, new series that I'm excited to launch down here in Antarctica. So those are coming up on the channel next. I'll see you in those videos.